There we go. Right, we've got everybody on. Well, there's uh, a good group of people joining us tonight. Thank you very much for all of you that have decided to join us. Um, the one thing I would say before I introduce our two guests tonight is that, and I've said this every week, so if you've joined us each week, I apologise. We're not going to talk about COVID. We, we know that it's a, a tough situation for everybody. Um, we're certainly not making light of it in any way, shape or form, but just for an hour, we're going to forget COVID. And we're going to talk about the great game of cricket. We're very fortunate tonight that we're joined by, and I'll have to be careful how I phrase this, but a former international all-rounder and a current and aspiring international all-rounder in Laura McLeod and Izzy Wong. And it's brilliant to have you with us, Laura and Izzy. Thank you very much indeed for giving up your time tonight. Very kind of you. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. We, uh, we've got contrast in hairstyles, so uh, we've got uh, sensible to uh, an awful lot of blonde going on there to absolutely nothing here, so uh, we're uh, very contrasting. There'll be no mixing up who's speaking at any particular time. Um, well, we'll start with a really easy one for the pair of you. Um, what, what's this last two months taught you, if anything, um, about you? What have you learned? What have you... Uh, what have you thought about in terms of the game of cricket and what have, maybe have you learned about yourselves in the last couple of months? Laura, should we start with you? Okay. Um, so I have been in my role since February um, and you'd think by now uh, I'd be ready <laughs> with a plan um, to uh, deal with whatever is going to be coming our way um, whether that be playing, whether that be um, staffing. But actually, <laughs> what I've found is um, there's a lot to learn within, within the role, um, and I've really enjoyed that. So it, it's not just the cricket that I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing, in effect, setting up a company. So I've learned that there are a number of skills that you need in order to do that. Um, and I have found some things quite daunting. Um, but actually quite enjoy that experience. It's like um, going out to face, I don't know, Julian Goswami or Catherine Fitzpatrick. It's, it's an exciting, daunting. Um, I've been uh, training hard. So um, I'm a bit of a, uh, I like to eat, I think you could say. So I exercise a lot so I can eat a lot. Uh, so <laughs> I have been doing a lot of biking, a lot of running and actually got back into open water swimming as well last week. Um, which was great um, and can highly recommend that um, um, and it, I think as well I have um, I, I found this period not overly challenging but <clears throat> I can understand why other people might find it challenging particularly if they're uh, on their own so um, I am empathetic to everyone's circumstances um, and I do feel for people who are in a um, worse place than what I am but uh, I've I'm good. I'm really good, actually. Excellent. Well, I'm really pleased to that. We'll come back to your role. I want to talk more about your role. And I want to talk about, you know, the, the, your playing side of things into, you know, coaching, administration. And obviously, we'll talk about the regional setup as we go through. So, Izzy, what, um, what, what's this last two months been like for you? Enjoyable? Frustrating? Um, I guess a bit of everything. But and any key learnings in these last couple of months? Um, to be honest, Fabi, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, I remember like when the schools first broke up, there was like the wild excitement of A levels are cancelled, and then there was the kind of oh, A levels are cancelled, mm. and then there was the realization that the cricket season wasn't going to start as usual. So I think that was that was definitely a dip. But um, yeah, I think I've just learned a bit like just about patience and just actually I've got no control over when I'm going to be able to get out there. So. There's no point stressing about it. I might as well just relax and do what I can at home and just, yeah, just not stress too much about when I can get out there, when I can't get out there, what I can and can't do because I know what I can do and if I can do it, I'll do it. And if I can't do it, then I won't do it. And I, I think I've just simplified things down a bit. So, yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, I mean, that sounds like a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent mantra to live through over the last couple of months. Um, in, in terms of... The, the obviously the Warwickshire group that you're involved with the first team squad fantastic year last year um, and before Laura moved on into a new role with regional cricket winning 
the, the, the Vitality Blast competition must have been absolutely fantastic. And I, I guess, you know, for, for the majority of that group, really looking forward to, to building on last season. What sort of, um, what, what's the group been able to do as a, as a group? Um, and obviously individually, but has there been much chatting? Has there been any group fitness sessions? What have you been doing as a group? Um, so we do, you know, there's, it sounds really silly, but those like emoji films, it's like guess the film and it's like the shark fin, it's Jules. We've done loads of them. Like every time someone sees one of them on Twitter, it gets sent in. So we've been keeping up with each other socially, but um, as well as that, we do a Sunday, Sunday midday um, Zoom like fitness circuit with the um, RSNC Emily. Um, so that's been really nice just kind of see everyone and like keep each other motivated I think uh, obviously it was a really good campaign last year but I think the one thing we took from that is there's so much further we can go as a squad like we won we won the league but we could have played so much better and there's so much room for improvement so I think we were looking forward to that all winter just building on it and then it's just we've just been keeping each other motivated to keep building on that through the summer really Excellent. And Laura, just looking back on last summer with, with the first team squad, I mean, you, you must have been incredibly proud to see them win that trophy. And it was a great evening here at Edgebaston when the squad took the trophy round. I mean, we, we didn't have too much else to shout about here last year in terms of winning <laughs> games. So, you know, it, it was a great evening to see the squad touring around the, the stadium. You, you must have looked down on that with real pride, seeing the team develop. Um, and play as well as they did in that competition? Yeah, um, as Izzy points out there, um, I think winning the T20 was uh, the icing on the cake, given the fact that um, we'd started, um, the results weren't, didn't go away in the 50 over competition, um, but the, the performances that uh, people put out started to, uh, stamped some authority and started to show that Warwickshire meant business. Um, and you know, you described these two months as a as a roller coaster. That last day, um, when I think three teams um, could could have taken the title, um, you, I was glued to my phone to try and see what was going on in the other games. And um, we did we, did we lose our first? game Wongi we did yeah, we? yeah we lost our yeah. first game but Hampshire lost but, as well didn't they yeah so really we could have sealed a, a victory in the, the very first game of the day because Hampshire uh, lost so it really was on the line in that last game and um, the girls really did put in a, a, a really impressive uh, performance um, and they absolutely thoroughly enjoyed uh, the little wander around uh, Edgebaston and being able to showcase the trophy in front of uh, Warwickshire fans and is it in terms of I, I watched the game at Nottingham, which ended up with you needing to try and hit a six off the last ball of the game. The thing that impressed me, what was the character that Laura talked about there in terms of you know and getting to know some of the players a little bit better over a period of time of being at the club. That the character certainly is there in that group, and that that definitely was needed on that final day. But it definitely looked like it was there, and and there were a lot of. As Laura said, maybe the results didn't quite go through the early part of the season, but actually there were a lot of very, very close games that could have gone either way. And actually, in terms of win column, you know, it, you probably could have doubled your, your wins without too many um, issues, really. Yeah, I think like of the, of the 50 over campaign, I think like four of the games or something like were won within one wicket or four yeah. runs or something like that. So I think it's just... Um, it's almost like winning's a habit and I think at the start of the season we were just kind of in the habit of fighting all the way all the way and then not quite getting there yeah, so yeah. yeah it was really satisfying towards the end of the season with the T20 campaign that we actually managed to get over the line in those games and I think that's what made it so much better at the end of it looking back that actually how far we'd come as a squad even from the first game of like the 4th of May till you know July when actually we'd got really close but lost and got really close but lost and then to get really close and win was just made it so much sweeter at the end I think. Yeah absolutely and it, and it was I mean, brilliant for the whole club but as I say you know it, it was and it was a great evening to see you parading that trophy um, and first time that Warwickshire as a senior team have won a, a national trophy so I mean that, that's fantastic and it does you know it does bode well for the future that the only I guess that the only thing with that is that now regional cricket has come on board 
Um, there are going to be changes to the women's county game, and we'll come on to that. So, it, it, is it in terms of your aspirations now? I mean, you've you've obviously played county cricket. You've got yourself into the England academy setup. You got yourself into regional cricket. What 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 were the goals for this year? Building on last year, what were your own particular goals for this coming summer? Um, for this summer, I think I wanted to kind of take more, for Warwickshire, take more responsibility of the ball. I think, um, obviously, it was my first year in the senior side last year, so I was very much kind of the youngster in the side, whereas I actually wanted to kind of just step up and take some responsibility and try, try and, you know, be that kind of figure that people can look to if it's a tough situation and you can almost rely on to get a job done. Um, I think beyond that, the 100 I was really looking forward to. Um, obviously not going ahead now for obvious reasons but um, yeah I was really looking forward to that just because it's something new it's exciting and I think it just to be able to put yourself next to the best players in the world and just see how good you are like Meg Lannings you know all all the players are playing in it and just to actually be able to be in that environment and learn off people like you know Amy Jones, Sophie Devine would have just been absolutely incredible so uh, obviously we'll have to wait for that one but I'm sure it'll be worth the wait um, sorry tonight um, <laughs> um but yeah I just wanted to kind of get a foot in there obviously I had um I had a good run with Vipers last year and just build on that really and kind of come I was looking forward to coming back to the West Midlands as well because Southampton's lovely but it's got nothing on a uh, nothing on nothing on Warwickshire so um feel a bit more at home <laughs> now you, you mentioned the Vipers there I mean you, you your first wicket uh in the KSL last year got fantastic reviews um, for your celebration and the way that you got your wicket and BBC website covered it. And I and I, I was able to talk a lot about you as a cricketer in terms of you know, the, the, the exuberance, the fun, uh, the excitement that you brought to it. I mean, just talk us through getting that wicket. And, you know, obviously, um, you, you mentioned, uh, we'll, we'll come back to it in a moment, but just talk us through that getting that wicket and playing KSL, how exciting was that? Oh, the KSL was unreal. I think um, I just learned so much and I was lucky I got that wicket on the TV game because I played two games before that and they hadn't been on TV. So I was lucky, I performed, performed when the, at the right time. But um, yeah, like I said, it's just so such a good environment. We had a really nice group of girls at Vipers and we just got all got on so well and I think there some of the senior girls as well were just really good, like with some of the younger ones in the team, just actually not being far off and above us, but actually they just took us under their wing and taught us everything they could really. So I think that's that's one of the massive things I took from it that like people like we had Stefani Taylor who's like West Indies captain and is like unreal like she's the coolest person I've ever met. She's so cool. But like, you know what I mean? You can be as big as her, but you can still you can still chat to anyone like like you like they best mate. So yeah, I think I learned a lot on, on and off the pitch, and it was just an amazing experience. And to get that wicket was just it was nice. I think me and Tammy had chatted about plans and stuff to different batters, and just when it all goes to plan, it's a massive massive sigh of relief, really. Fantastic, Laura. You, you were in the same boat, and um, you know, as a an aspiring all rounder. Um, exciting to play for England. You, you, you play for England many times, you know, across all forms. Um, so to see someone like Izzy playing the game, playing with the enthusiasm and the opportunities that she's got, that, that, that also must be quite exciting for you to see someone um, playing with that, that much fun and that much enjoyment. Um, and if there was a word of thought that you would give her that you wish you'd known at the same age, um, what would it be? Oh, um, I think what I see when I watch uh, Izzy play is um, a real, real sense of freedom, uh, which I, I think that I actually not you know not through uh, any coaches in particular or. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and watching myself back play, oh my God, I was boring. You know, I didn't play with, with the flair that, um, that Izzy's got or that, that some of the girls have got now. So I would say 
that the game that we need the girls to play right now, the game that, that will make more people um, turn their heads to is an attractive game. Uh, and that requires um, a fearless approach. Um, and, it, and, and, you know, you, you've, you've got to take responsibility, yes, but there is a, uh, there's a role that everybody can play and it may not be the big part in every game. It may be a, you know, a really kind of minor part, but um, I, I absolutely embrace everything and, and continue with that fearless attitude. Yeah, fantastic. And, that, and that's, you know, I, I think that's, it's, a, it's an interesting concept, isn't it? Because, you know, you say that, you know, when you were playing, and let, let's go back to 99, 2000, 2001, you know, we're talking, you know, 20 years ago when you were that aspiring um, all-rounder coming into the England side. There was a lot of senior players that you had to sort of get yourself into. And Izzy's talking about, you know, learning from them, watching them. But but I also that there's a sense that these young players coming in, not only do they add energy to the team, but the senior players also look at them and think, blimey, I've, I've got to play well here because these young players are here to take my place. And it's not a case of, you know, sneaking in the back door of the changing room and sitting quietly. It's actually going in the front door and saying, I'm here to show you how good I am. And, and that's really refreshing to see as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. There's, uh, there's no formal cue now. <laughs> um, you know, when, when uh, you see some exciting talent, there is, uh, and somebody who maybe have had a bit of a dip in the form or, or on a plateau, it's absolutely get them in right there, right then. It's brutal uh, performance sport. Uh, but that's how it is. It's got. It, it has to entertain. So um, I think, yeah, some of the senior players are definitely going to be looking behind, thinking um, that uh, they're going to have to uh, p turn out some performances to retain their place. And do you think the game has changed a lot in from when you started playing to where it is now? And if it has, what would be the most significant changes? Uh, it, it has, and I'll, I'll build on that point when I, you know, I watch myself play. Um, the batting has changed drastically. I think that's the biggest. Um, I think that's the biggest change that you could see, and it it, it go, builds on that point again about the the fearlessness um, and uh, rather than playing quite traditional cricket shots, yeah. you know, out of the coaching manual. Um, I think what the, some of the uh, female players have done is they've really built on their strengths. So the sweep has become one of the biggest shots that there that, that, that could be in, in the game because it, it, it's difficult as a female to, you know, be able to hit a straight six with a check drive. So um, it comes with risk, of course. Um, but if you back yourself and, and you pick the right ball or you certainly keep... Uh, keep a watchful eye on it, then um, uh, the sweep and the, and the ramps and things like that have, uh, have certainly become a part of the, the modern game. I started playing the ramp towards the back end of my career and um, uh, I really liked it as a, as a shot. So um, it, it's a shame that I, I didn't play a little bit longer because so, I would have loved it uh, to play the, certainly the T20 game uh, right now. Um, the other thing that's uh, improved as well is the fielding. Yeah, you know, the athleticness uh, uh, of uh, players right now. The it's <laughs> you'll know, uh, you know, because you spent a, a number of years watching from the sidelines and probably getting very frustrated with the fact that we couldn't get to the ball quick and didn't dive. Um, so that's moved on um, monumentally. Uh, I think the bowling is always going to be uh, roughly the same. You know, a good area is a is a good area, and it's yeah. just yeah. Uh, a matter maybe of, of tinkering a little bit depending on the circumstance and what batter you're bowling to. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. You, uh, now, I, I've said many times over probably the last 12, 15 months, um, watching from you know the, the outside, if you like, and looking in, that there has never been a better time for a woman or, or girl to play the game of cricket um, in terms of how the game has moved on. Um, would you uh, would you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. Um, it 
Well, at age 11, which is when I started playing, um, you know, I could only play boys under 18 cricket. And, you know, you know the girls now have, have got a, a proper structure. They, they've got a pathway that um, they hopefully understand and they know every single step that they are going to take in order to make it to the next one, to the next one, and then to, you know, to get the big prize of, of uh, playing for England. Yeah, and, that, and that's... You know that that the, the you're right. The pathway through now for a young player, um, you know, it is there for them. The opportunities are there for them, and the rewards now are, are getting better all the time as well. They absolutely are. Um, you know, with with the regional infrastructure that we're putting in place, it's the first time that we've done any sort of uh, professionalism under uh, outside of outside of England. So. The, the foundations are being um, laid um, and there's there's plans to build on that as well. You know, we're not just going to uh, rest at five full-time players um, and a pay-to-play squad. Um, you know, we will, well, depending on what happens, I suppose, this summer, um, the plan is that we're going to need to have more full-time professionals in order to provide an oversupply of players for England who are going to then compete and, and hopefully bring back some trophies. Absolutely. I mentioned earlier the regional structure. Um, for those that are not necessarily up to speed with it that are on this or are going to listen in later, could, could you just sort of briefly just give us a little bit of a, a setup of, of how regional cricket will work and what decisions you've taken in terms of selection over the last couple of weeks as well? Yeah, um, so it's part of the uh, transforming uh, women's and girls uh, cricket action plan that the ECB um, have uh, committed to and setting up eight regions across the country uh, has been uh, a part of, of that plan. So each of the eight regions will play in an um, elite domestic women's competition um, I could talk about original plans, which would be a 50 over competition this year and moving into T20 next year. But with, you know, there's pretty, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding that this year, but essentially it will be a, a professional set of staff um, that uh, includes coaches, uh, support staff um, and a team ops person. So we are building a professional structure there that will, um, that will coach um, for t- minimum of 12 hours a week, five professionals. Uh, and we will also run an academy side as well. So we're adding, we're adding rungs into the pathway um, and we're making, making it that uh, it, the, the, the end, the, the, this bit between county and England now is, is really uh, an attractive proposition um, and something that if you are, you're willing, you're able, you're keen, you're motivated. Um, you know, you can you can be a professional cricketer and, and earn some money from it. I'm not suggesting for one moment it's a massive amount of money, but it's it will get better. Uh, it's a yeah, start, yeah. and um, you know, with the competitions that are in in place, not only in this country but across the globe, um, you know, it will become a um, a, a really good uh, profession uh, to be in. Yeah, fantastic. And, and Izzy, let, let's take you back to um, your starting in, in cricket. I mean, Laura mentioned there, you know, 11-year-old had to play under-18 boys cricket. There has definitely been a better pathway for you. I think I read somewhere that you, your start was a, a chance to shine session at school and a coach picked you out and suggested you went to your local club. Um, and there's been a pathway there for you to follow through to where you are now. Is, is that right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I've done a little bit of tennis ball stuff um, in the playground with complete, but then yeah, chance to shine came in in year four, I think. And yeah, I just it was a bit more formalised, and I just you know developed, and it was always something I really enjoyed. I think when I was younger, my parents were always very keen, like if you don't enjoy something, don't do it. Yeah. But yeah. it was something that I just loved doing, and I just wanted to get better. I wanted to go to every session, so I went down to K and D about. I must have been eight or nine. Um, I started playing in the in the boys' teams there because they didn't have a girls' section at the time. So um, I was playing with, yeah, under 10s there. And we had a really good group of lads, to be honest. And they were just, like, they just didn't turn a hair. They're like, yeah, Izzy's playing. Cool. 
who we're playing against. Excellent. Like it was never, never anything out of the ordinary, really. So yeah, I think that I got competitive with the boys when I was quite young because obviously they're boys and you know they think they're going to be better than you and you know every time you every time you take a wicket you're kind of proving them wrong. So I think that was something I took quite a lot of quite a lot of enjoyment out of from an early age. <laughs> um, and then I was playing um, for Warwickshire from the age of nine. Um, just moved up the age groups and yeah, yeah, took off from there really. But like I said, you know, I've always enjoyed it and I've always just wanted to go to train and want wanted to, you know, drive to Edgebaston, make my parents get up early to drive to Edgebaston on a Sunday morning, which I'm sure they're very thankful for me now. But <laughs> <laughs> and, and just talk us through some of your learnings then in terms of, you know, you, you talked about if you didn't enjoy it, you wouldn't have done it. And obviously you thoroughly enjoyed it. You found you were obviously quite good at it. Um, at what stage did you actually start thinking, yeah, this game is for me and that this is the game I want to play? Um, I don't know. It's a difficult one because I think, you know, when you go into the playground, you know, everyone's there batting. Oh, who was it? Andrew Strauss. I want to be like Andrew Strauss. I want to be like Alistair Cook. You know, I want to be like Jimmy Anderson. And I think everyone, like, you know what you mean? When you're like eight, everyone wants to be Jimmy Anderson. And I just never stopped kind of wanting, well, obviously, you know, Jimmy Anderson kind of went out the window and I was, I was like, by the age of 10, I was like, I want to be Catherine Brunt. And I've just never really lost that, that, um, yeah, that aspiration, really. I think it wasn't a case of when did the light bulb switch? It's the fact that it's just not switched off from when I was seven or eight, really. Brilliant. And and what about the thought of, you know, probably then the thought of being a professional cricketer maybe wasn't on your radar, but in in recent times, obviously, it started to become, you know, a very, very tangible thing for you to to do. The the excitement of becoming a professional cricketer, I mean, does that drive you on or is it just purely the love of the game that that keeps driving you? I think it's a combination of two, to be honest. I think if you're you know, if you really want to do something, you want to do it as much as you can. And obviously the chance to become a professional cricketer is just giving you that freedom to play more and more cricket, really. So, yeah, I think they go hand in hand, really. But like I said, I've just just love the game, really. I'm a bit of a badger. So the thought of, you know, potential contracts flying around, well, I'm not flying around, like slowly crawling around, but... um yeah, it's just really exciting, to be honest. Um, I think women's cricket is in such an exciting place at the moment and it's just growing and growing and growing. And hopefully, even if I can play the tiniest little part in that growth, then, yeah, that'll be me happy. Fantastic. And Laura, let's take you back then to selections that you've made in terms of regional cricket. You, you, you've obviously you know, made some decisions. You've selected some players. Um, how many players will you end up with, ideally, in your your regional squad and you're going to have two squads, a senior and an academy squad. Um, what, how many players eventually will you get to in those squads? Um, so we will be announcing very shortly um, three players uh, who will be on uh, what's being called a retainer contract. Um, so um, there was, before COVID hit, um, we, in fact, probably year yesterday, um, if we if we were sticking to the original plans, there should have been five full time contracted players starting. So um, we've gone, uh, we've rode back a little bit from that, and we're going to um, announce three players probably next week uh, in the West Midlands. And it's been a really difficult um, thing to select those players um, because uh, I haven't got a head coach. Uh, I haven't got a, I haven't got scouts. I haven't got, uh, you know, like an Ed Smith equivalent. Um, so it's, it's me along with a handful of people who have, um, who I've consulted with, who've made recommendations to me. Um, I'd like to think that I've got a good, uh, understanding of, uh, who's in the West Midlands. Um, so I think, uh, I, uh, I'm in a bit of I'm in a better position than maybe some of my colleagues who have come into it and and have no knowledge of who's around in the region. Um, but uh, it will be it will be a fantastic time for for those that uh, start to join us. Um, and moving forwards, then um, sometime 
I guess in the off season, we'll get uh, to a place where we've hopefully got those five full-time players. Um, between now and the winter, we're hoping to play. So there'll be a senior squad of roughly 15. Um, and then the, um, the one that's outstanding there is the academy. And that, again, will be around about 15 players um, open age group uh, we're going to call it um, and um, so I guess we would be working with around about 30 players uh, over the summer and the winter at various points. Yeah fantastic and, and is there any chance you can give us any clues <laughs> maybe as to uh, your, your three uh, announcements or are you going to keep that firmly under wraps? Um, or maybe I can say that, that, that one is certainly uh, on the call and that wouldn't be yourself, I'll be my friend. Uh, well, okay, excellent. Good news. Very good news. Excellent. Right. Now, th th this is the part where we'll throw it open to others that are out there uh, on the call. Um, if any of you do have a question, feel free to type your question into the, uh, uh, into the box and it will come through. We've got one here from Ben Hughes and, th and this is for both of you really we'll, we'll start with um we'll start with you law on this one um what did you do as a squad at training to put in winning performances and win the trophy last year so was there anything in particular that you did that actually helped you to win that trophy and law while you're answering that easy you can have a think about your answer <laughs> um Having, I mean, when I was in my role with, with Warwickshire, I very much left the coaches um, to it. So, you know, I would walk the boundary and get a sense of how everybody was feeling. But the, the wasn't, there wasn't too many times when I would venture into the changing rooms. But, you know, from what I could see in the chats that I had, I think um, what... What got us over the line was the uh, the honesty that was uh, within the team. So, um, you know, that was whether that be people holding their hands up going, I'm just, I'm sorry, that just wasn't good enough. Um, to a real um, trying to unpick what went wrong in their innings or what went wrong with a, with a bowling spell. Um, so there was uh, some real learnings uh, that took place. Uh, from week to week and then ideally put into a bit of practice midweek as well okay brilliant and, and is there anything in the winter that uh that was a focus anything during the, the the winter time that you talked about that you thought was going to be important going into last summer so the previous winter yes yeah, yeah. Um, I have to admit, I wasn't at training too much at the winter because I was at school in Loughborough, but I think the bits that I did catch we were very keen on you know we're playing for the bears and we're not we're representing not just ourselves but every you know the other 10 players on the pitch and all the kind of coaches s and c guys behind the staff but also you know everyone who's previously played for it and everyone who's you know playing age group stuff and you know clubs cricket as well so i think the fact that it was we kind of had that thing it was bigger than ourselves and we just wanted to I think especially on that last day, we just wanted to do it for each other. Um, I know certainly I was like, I, was, I think I was at Deep Square when the winning catch was taken. And I just remember being there like, if the ball comes to me, like, I'm not messing it up because like, I, don't, I wouldn't want to let any one of them 10 girls or the, you know, whoever's carrying the drinks at the time or Dom and Tom walking around the side, I wouldn't want to let them down. And I think that was the thing that probably got us over the line that, you know, you'll only do so much for yourself, I think. I think if you're doing something for yourself, you'll only go so far. But actually, if you're doing it for other people, I find I always get that 2% more out of myself just because, yeah, you can let yourself down and you can give yourself a hard word, but, you know, letting someone else down it always always gets me a little bit more. Oh, brilliant. That's very honest. Very honest. Um, Laura, one for you here from Callum, who's saying um, the question he's got is, due to the, the current situation, have you had to make um many changes to your plans um <laughs> due to uh maybe funding issues um we've definitely had to make um changes um because it's the right thing to do um i wouldn't i, I wouldn't want to have appointed all my staff and for them to then be on furlough so we've put all the recruitment uh, on hold um and we are assessing 
assessing that week by week really with um with the potential of maybe a season or maybe not a season so we're really thinking about how we are going to spend uh, our investment um and i think as well we're respectful that um you know every day that we aren't uh, up to full capacity is some savings that can be made to the game um that will help the bigger the bigger picture so um yes we've made changes but is there um plans to go back to what the original plans were absolutely um and i would be i'd be really uh, upset if um there isn't the investment there moving forwards. And I think you've got that right the way across women's sport. It's not yeah. just cricket um, yeah. that needs that investment. Um, you know, the women's game has, has been on a monumental uh, change uh, over the past uh, few years. Um, and we need to, we need to keep building that momentum. So we, I'd like to say that we'll probably come back bigger and better to than, than we ever were, were going to in the first place. Brilliant, excellent, that's very encouraging. Uh, one more for you, Laura. Um, you touched on the open age earlier in terms of regional cricket. Is the analyst want to know what is the age group of the open <laughs> age? Um, do, you, do you have an age group or is it just literally is an open age? It, it probably will be. So, um, you know, A, I don't like uh setting boundaries uh for a program that essentially will sit underneath the senior squad so if all the senior squad are uh 30 then yes you could say that we will have you know a, a, um uh, an academy that that might be younger that might be older but um as it is you know you've got izzy who's 18 here um right the way through to you know, maybe somebody who's only mid twenties actually. So um, it just depends on you know what layer and how old they are that uh, sit below that. So could be as low as fourteen, fifteen, but equally, given that women sometimes come to cricket quite late um, and are able to develop skills pretty quickly, um, I, I wouldn't want to cap it at let's say under nineteen. Um, I think if if myself or the the coaches the coaches really um think that there is potential uh big potential growth in somebody who's 22 for instance then why not why not put them on the academy brilliant excellent thank you very much right easy got one for you here we're, we're going to get into some um, serious thinking now Stuart has said that they're running uh, very socially distanced and responsible nets at kenilworth wardens he's got a 14 year old daughter who wants to bowl as fast as Izzy Wong. Now he wants a drill that you can recommend for her to use to bowl fast. What have you got for us? A drill? Oh, um, I think, like, I think fast bowling as much as physically is a mindset. And I think if you want to bowl fast, then a lot of the time you can bowl fast. Uh, obviously, there are technical things that can be put in place to enable that, but I think there is a massive mindset to it. So I'd say if you want to bowl fast, then go into a net session and want to bowl fast. Don't let anyone. I think when I was younger, a lot of coaches tried to tell me, you know, oh, don't bowl, don't bowl, don't try and bowl as quickly. Just try and hit a nice area, and I paid little attention to them as much as I should have. But I think, yeah, I think you've got to want to bowl quickly. Um, drills wise, I think um, my my bowling coach always splits fast bowling into three parts when you're trying to get quicker. So he says there's your action, um, there's your S and C, and there's there's your run up. So that's kind of three areas and three things you can do to get faster. I think I'm not qualified to tell you anything about your action, but I think with run up that's something I worked quite a lot on this winter was just trying to get it like really fluid and really smooth and make sure that you can get to a speed where actually when you let go of the ball it's going to be you know not slow so yeah I think that's something that's something that I've tried to work on a lot over the winter um, obviously there's not too much room for a run up in the garden but uh, there's little things you can do like hurdles or if you don't have hurdles you could probably get water bottles probably a bit health and safety but maybe like some cones or even bits of paper and just 
get your run up really, really ingrained and smooth, I think. Yeah. Okay. So you're definitely of the, uh, my, well, mindset's obviously big for you. And that's come out over, we've been talking now for 45 minutes. Mindset is obviously massive for you. And again, I, I think I read somewhere that you, one of your aims is just to be the fastest bowler um, playing the game in women's cricket. Um, and it sounds as though you genuinely believe that you can do that. Yeah, I think, you know, why not? Like, you know, the worst thing that's going to do is I'm going to aim for it and I'm going to work really hard and I might not quite get there. And, you know, hopefully if I aim really high, then even if I don't get there, I'll still hopefully achieve more out of myself than I would have done if I just thought, oh, I want to be, I want to hit a nice area. So, um, yeah, I think mindset's been something that we've worked quite a lot on over the winter was... Um, in our England Academy sessions, you know, we always go into them, especially fielding, like Laura said earlier, how fielding is kind of developing in the women's game. And yeah. our coaches say to us all the time, like, if you if if the seniors girls were to walk in now, you know, Heather Knight would probably outbat you, Catherine Brunt and Annie Shrubs will probably outbowl you, but you've got the chance to outfield them. So yeah. like just put your everything into that because it's such a key part of the game and I think mindset is like a massive part of that. Like I struggled with my fielding, but actually I realised it is just a change of mindset. And if you start wanting the ball to come to you and you start wanting to get to it, and not just wanting to get to it and save the one, but wanting to get to it and get a run out, then yeah, I think that aggressive mindset is just pushes the limit so much higher than you thought it could be if you just played it safe. But you've Fantastic. also got your eyes as well, won't you? Yeah. Yeah, I, that that was probably really why I struggled with my fielding. I have really bad eyes, so they just don't work together. So I went to the opticians and I was actually seeing two of everything. And the optician lady was like, I thought you play cricket. I was like, I do. She's like, it's like you've been using the force because literally. But yeah, I've got some new glasses, so hopefully that will work. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, one, for, one for you both here. Um, Bernard is asking about Test cricket. Now, he's saying how much of an, an aspiration is it for you, Izzy, to play Test match cricket? Um, and I'd ask Laura, having been someone who has played all forms of the game for England, is Test cricket the way, is it the best vehicle to sell the game? Or is actually the shorter form the best way to sell the game? So is, he, is the aspiration there? And Laura, is it the best way to sell uh, women's cricket to the world so I'll start with you Izzy. Um, I think test cricket is always like it's exciting isn't it you watch like stuff like the Headingley game last year it's exciting it's despite the fact it goes on longer I think the longer is like the tension so um, yeah it's definitely something I'd like to give it a go um, obviously I've never had a chance to so yeah it, I'm sure it'd be I think it's a challenge more than anything it's a challenge can you bowl 20 overs in a day and yeah. still we have to walk the next day so yeah, yeah. yeah new challenge so yeah what is the mo what is the most overs you bowled in a day oh i reckon or 14 or 15 i reckon if i've if i haven't bowled well the day before i have a long run up to make sh long warm up to make sure i'm ready so probably okay. about four overs and then 10 in the game okay all right excellent thank you laura is um, test cricket the way forward i think i think it could be if um it's put as part of a series. So the Ashes uh, that is currently uh, contested between England women and Australian women, um, I think if it's in a series like that, that has meaning, absolutely. Um, I think it does have a place. Um, but if, if um, we are to uh, grab audiences and grow the following of the game, um, I think people want to see the more exciting form of the game. And that's notwithstanding that, uh, of course, there are traditional people out there. Um, but I, I do think that there should be a probably a proportional focus on uh, growing the, the people, the eyes that, that watch, uh, while still trying to uh, keep to some tradition. OK, excellent. All right. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, and we'll stay with you, Laura. Ben is asking about how, as a coach, you communicate with your players to build and maintain a high-quality relationship. Now, I know that you're 
you know, you're, you're, you're now overseeing the coaches, but you've been involved with the game for a long time and you'll have experienced some fantastic coaching and some dreadful coaching. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you will have, yeah, you, exactly. And you will have, you know, you, you, you have definitely done some coaching yourself, you yeah. know, and you've worked with players. So, you know, in terms of building and maintaining high quality relationships, what have you seen that's worked? Um, and how have people built on that as coaches? Um, what I think works is, is getting to know the player as a person. Um, so, you know, not just, not just understanding them as a cricketer, but actually understanding them as a person, what makes them tick, what gets them frustrated, um, why do they play cricket? I think that those are, certainly why do they play cricket is a, a real crucial uh, question uh, that, that any coach could ask of a player. Um, not just you know from a coach's point of view of how then to deal with that player, but as a reminder to the player when they have a bad day that this is why you play it. Um, and I think as well that there, there will be coaches and coach player relationships that really work. Um, and there'll be coach and player relationships that, that, that don't work. But uh, ultimately, I think, um, you know, to, to respect one another um, and to understand that uh, not everybody needs to be a carbon copy of yourself. And actually difference is, is good because difference creates diversity and a different way of, of doing things. Um, so, um, you know, for me, I, I, I obviously click, um, do people understand that you were the England coach, Fabi, and you coached me for a long, long time? Because I know that we're talking about a few in jokes here, but. <laughs> well, we, we had a, we had two or three years, didn't we? We, uh, you, as I say, you, you were that up and coming, exciting all rounder in the team. Um, and I promise not to mention you running between the wickets. And I was also, <laughs> you know, I was at the start of my you know, coaching period. So, you know, 20 years ago, I, I was setting off full of enthusiasm and heart on my sleeve and got quite frustrated at times. But I mean, that that's what, you know, I, I learned a lot in my time working with the, the senior women's team. So, you know, and, and the good thing is I've still got good relationships with people like you. So I couldn't have been, uh, couldn't have been all bad, but it, it, it was, a, you know, it, it was an interesting time, wasn't it, for us as a, as a player-coach relationship. And you definitely... You know, you, you, I think you, you change from getting very caught up in the, the end result to actually starting to, nowadays, I think we think far more about the person and trying to help people rather than worrying too much about that end result. The end result is massively important, but actually developing the person as well as developing the player has definitely been a key thing for us as coaches over the last few years, I reckon. Absolutely. Um I think some of the coaches um, that that I connected with were those who who got to know me and would know, um, you know, when to say something and when not to say something, um, uh, or um, you know, just a look. Actually, it, it is worth sometimes, um, you know, a million words. Um, so John Armour, I, I really enjoyed. He was an Australian. Um, cricket coach kind of a biomechanist and he baffled me with some of the things that he said but he also intrigued me as to how things worked uh, so he was somebody that uh, uh, I gel with uh, a lot and um, it yeah it is it is going on that that people side and um, you know if, if anything um, that people can do is is to actually think about how do you how do you connect with people or how do you put other people that might connect with, with that player better? Yeah. yeah. Not Absolutely. matching them skill for skill. It's actually matching some of their characteristics and, and qualities. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And that, and I mean, we could spend, we could spend a whole hour just talking about that. So it's a good question from Ben. Izzy, I want to bring you in here. The other part of Ben's um, question is, you know, it, it is aimed at coaches, but I think we'll, we'll turn it around as a player and he's talking about resilience and he's talking about the pressure of the game and how you can get players to cope with the pressure of the game. Is that something that you've talked about, certainly at Warwickshire, but also with England Academy? Have you talked about dealing with the pressures and how, when you're under pressure, how you cope in that situation? Yeah, I think um, a lot of the stuff we talk about is preparation. So not just preparation the night before a game, but actually 
every training session you're preparing for something and I think what we have a little saying that we use is like our aim when we go into any session like gym work cricket session running session whatever is to be able to compete at the next level from ball one and I think we've always kind of got that in our in our head that actually every session is getting us this much further up the mountain and hopefully then when we get onto the mountain that we've we know we've got hundreds of these little steps behind us so that we can actually go out there and express ourselves and even if we do you know fail fail horrifically you know I've failed horrifically so many times I'm only 18 Um, but hopefully if we do not you know fail then we've got training behind us and it's not something to be worried about or scared about and yeah I think that that kind of mindset of just going out there and expressing yourself but making sure you've got the training and the miles behind you to be able to do that freely fantastic really really interesting that um Howard's asked a question and Izzy I'll I'll start with you on this you you both he asked two parts and one was about sharing your experiences as juniors coming through and you've both done that um an 11 year old girl starting the game now um he's got Howard's got a daughter of 11 and he's saying how would how would you suggest that that 11 year old gets the best out of herself in what is he talks about a male majority game um what would your advice be on that um obviously a lot more boys play cricket than girls but I don't think that has to be a negative thing you know for me I've never seen that as a negative thing I've never thought oh there's there's no girls here and, um I think my pet I'm really lucky my parents have always just said you know they've they've never said to me oh you can't you can't you can't beat them they're a boy like don't expect to bowl faster than them they're a boy actually they're just like oh go on then show us and yeah I think I'm really lucky that I always just viewed it as a challenge really but I think if you want to get your best out of yourself just have fun especially at 11 like you're 11 like just enjoy it and if you enjoy it you'll work hard I'm a big believer in if you enjoy something then you'll put the put the effort in and make it work even if it's not likely if you enjoy something you work hard enough for it it will probably happen so Fantastic. yeah just keep enjoying it brilliant great advice brilliant advice right this is for both of you and i'm going to start with you this time izzy and i'm going to give law a bit of thinking time on this one this is from Callum, and he wants to know michael vaughan recently talked about maybe the the pitch should only be um 20 yards rather than 22 yards um any strong views on that i think if the pitch is only 20 yards i'd probably get it in the batter's half more often <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I like it. I think um, obviously the ball's different. the The ring's already slightly smaller. I think I think that works well, and I think it gives girls and women that opportunity to go and play men's cricket. Yeah. I think this change between I don't even know how heavy the balls are, but a men's ball and a women's ball yeah. is, you know, never going to be as drastic as bowling two yards longer and suddenly you're going to be bowling half trackers more than you'd like to so yeah. um well you don't mind the odd bounce or i've seen you bounce people so i know you don't mind yeah them have a few um, the if they're short on the wicket anymore i might start hitting myself on the toe so. <laughs> 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 and, and laura you, your thoughts on this i mean this this came up i remember the world cup in new zealand in 2001 that i went to and there was a lot of chat then about you know, the pitch should be shorter, it would make for a more entertaining game, it would make for a faster game. Where do you stand on that? I think I haven't thought at length about it. Um, and I suppose the way I go about thinking was that, about... Was that, a, was that a play on words? I haven't thought about the length of it. <laughs> at length. Unbelievable that skill. That was sorry. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> um, I, I would assess this in terms of the pros and the cons, I think, in that, you know, of course, Um, bowlers would become quicker um, if you shorten the pitch but what I would be concerned about is does that create an uneven competition Um, and I think if we phase this in it could work Um, because I think it would I I know bowlers uh, would would absolutely delight in in this Uh, but there is some 
there are some adjustments to make, but I think the adjustments for a batter to make would be more significant when you're facing quick bowlers because they would be bloody sharp. Yeah. Um, when uh, if you were to shorten it and put put uh, Wongi on a on that sort of pitch, um, it, it would sharpen up. Um, so I think that if we were to go for that, then it need to be a phased approach. But then that prevents then you know there being mixed cricket um, and and you know being used to the conditions. So I can see it from both both points of view, um, and I, I've not got a strong view as to whether it's the right thing or not. I just think that give us a bit of time because yeah. you the game is just you know you watch Alyssa, Alyssa Healy in that World Cup final. Yeah, um, you know she smashed it. Um, uh, and you know there there were some quick bowlers as uh, as well. So uh, maybe it's just some people getting a bit um, uh, impatient. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, just give us a few years, bit of S and C behind us, um, and a few more years of practice. And I think you'll see a more uh, a quicker game, which is what the, in essentially that is what Michael Vaughan is suggesting. Okay, fantastic. Um, Neil's asking a question here for you, Laura. Uh, how are you going to select your squad and your academy players if they've not played much, if any, <laughs> cricket this summer? Um, it is uh, a tricky, um, a tricky thing to do actually, because I'm basing this, you know, on on um, what I've seen of them uh, in nets, what I've seen of them outdoors. Um, I suppose the biggest thing for me actually is to pick the character. Um, yeah. it, it's uh, all well and good if you can get a high performer, but if they are a difficult um, person that uh, individually and, and being in and around a team, um, I, I would certainly try and go with somebody who's got character and, and room to grow uh, from a skill point of view. So it's not perfect. Believe me, this is not the way I would want to do it this year. Um, and I would, I'd like to run trials. I'd like to run warm up games. I'd really like to put in place a, a really robust uh, and fair selection process. But as, as it may turn out, I might not be able to do that, but I'm hoping what I've, the way that I'm doing it and, and the people that I've consulted with means that we have got a largely the best players and it's been a fair thing, a uh, fair selection process. Excellent. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, and character has come through. I mean, there's absolutely no question. As I said, in an hour, just over an hour now, we've seen it is character. You talked earlier, Laura, about, you know, perhaps you played a bit safe when you played. And, and, you know, you're, you've talked about character um, and, and you listen to a lot of coaches around the world. You know, they're looking for character. They're looking for people that want to own the pitch, people that are comfortable being the bowler that bowls the last over. You know, the, the batter that walks out and wants to score the winning runs and be there at the end to see their team home. And that is a massive thing that's coming through in sport. And, you know, in Easy Tonight, I think we've seen someone who shows that real character in abundance. I've got one more question for you, Izzy. This is from Ben. He wants to know what lessons you've learned so far from the game, which you're putting into practice now. Um, I think the one that jumps out is something Gwen, Gwen Davis taught me, my coach at school and obviously my teammate for the women's team. Um, I can't remember when she said it, but she just said like, I think I'd had a bad session or something and I was just like down about it and she was just like wrongy like just like it'll get better but like cricket doesn't owe you anything like the game doesn't owe you anything things won't just happen for you so I know you've had a bad session but if you just sit back and wait for it to get better you know cricket's not like that it won't do that you'll just sit back and someone else will overtake you so I think that's been something that's jumped out of me it's just made me think like Oh, like if I want to do this and I want to be as best as good as I can, then I've got to put the work in. And I think that's something that's motivated me because the highs of cricket are so high, and I think that makes everything worth it. But you know, cricket's cricket can be the best game on the planet, but it can also be the worst game on the planet. And I think those dips and those low points, as long as you, I can. 
personally I find as long as I keep motivated and actually that's when I'll train the hardest then I can enjoy those high bits you know winning the winning the cup winning the league at Portland Road and walking around edge fasting with the trophy it just makes it so much better knowing that you've had those dips but actually you've you've gone out and you've trained hard and you've earned whatever whatever high you're experiencing at the moment fantastic absolutely listen I reckon that's a really good place to finish um it's been a really good hour thank you both Izzy and Laura for your openness and your honesty it's been fascinating to hear and as I said right at the start you know it, we're talking about you know a now administrator but a former player who has played as an around the, at the highest level and Izzy someone who is very very much on that upward path to hopefully international cricket senior cricket and really taking the game on and you know th th there's been a I think there's a lot of comparisons between the two of you um, I, I think that having watched a little bit of you Izzy and seen a fair bit of Laura that there is definitely um, you know that it shows where the game has perhaps moved on but it also shows that you know that the all-rounders in the game are crucial to every team um, and I said before we started tonight um, you might have Laura covered um, when it comes to pace. She probably had you covered when it comes to uh, to batting. You've definitely uh, got her covered when it comes to running between the wickets. Um, but we'll save that for another time, Laura. We won't mention New Zealand. But to both of you, thank you very much indeed. It's been absolutely brilliant listening to you. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Uh, and really good luck when we do get going. Uh, and to everyone that's joined us tonight and sent in questions, thank you very much. And I'm sure you'll have enjoyed it as much as I have. So... Thank you very much. Cheers all. Cheers, Bobby. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Cheers. Bobby. Thank you.